All right, guys, um, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about uh, our first day of Chapter 10. 10.3 uh, is the section we lead off with. Um, and Chapter 10 is called Conic Sections. Okay, this conic comes from cone. So we're talking about sections of a cone. Uh, and I'll post a video that shows you different ways that we can slice a cone so that it forms these, these different figures. So the first two, uh, the first one we talked about is a circle today. Second one is an ellipse, which is basically an oval with uh, some more um, characteristics uh, than are very specific. So we'll talk about um, some of that as we get into it. So today's probably the easiest day. Um, parabolas is coming up soon. That's an easy one. The two or, or the um, the one in between those gets a little complicated. So I guess that's a way of saying uh, make sure you're focusing on the easy stuff so that when the hard stuff comes, you're ready for it. Um, okay, so circles. We know circles. I'll do a quick review. Here's your standard form of circle. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Um, R is your radius, right? And H comma K, which is written right here, is your center. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to graph a couple of these. Right, so this first one's going to have a center of negative 4, positive 3. Negative 4, positive 3. So. Um, here's my r squared. So r is going to equal the square root of that, which is 2. So I go 2 in every direction. Right, left, up, down. And there's our circle. And circles are nice. Not much to find. Negative 3 comma 4, radius of 2. Okay, next one. Uh, 1, negative 2 for the center. This is r squared. So square root of that is root 11. Um, let's think of our perfect squares. 9, if, it, if r squared was 9, my radius is 3. Is a little more than three, right? If it was sixteen, it would be radius of four. So this is like three point, I don't know, three point two or something. So that just helps us visually. I'm gonna go between three and four. Hopefully, you guys are better at sketching than I am. This is terrible. Okay. So that's it for circles. Now let's talk about ellipses. Um, we'll talk a little more next next note session um, how circles are a special type of ellipse, um, but today we'll just kind of talk about them separately. So the ellipse, like we said, it's like an oval. Um, there's a bunch of key information we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about our vertices, which we have two. We're going to talk about co-vertices. I have two of those. Uh, we're going to talk about a focus, um, plural, that is foci, F-O-C-I, foci or foci. Um, and then, of course, we'll talk about our center. We'll also talk about a major and minor axis. Okay, but first let's look at standard form. So this is standard form um, of an ellipse. So the characteristics that make this standard form. Okay, this is very important. First. I need a plus sign here. I need two squared values. And I need equal to one. That tells me this is an ellipse in standard form. Once it's in standard form, uh, it becomes pretty easy to graph. So, similarity of this with a circle. Um, nice thing, you'd find the center exactly how you think you would. Uh, this is x minus 0, y minus 4, so my center is going to be 0, 4. Okay, um, next, instead of, um, think about a radius of a circle, that was how much we would go to the right and to the left, up and down. We're still going to think distance right and left up and down, 
but it's not going to be told by this value here because that's always going to be one when we're in our standard form. So the constant that is in the denominator below our x value, okay? So this is going to control horizontal. How do I know that's going to control horizontal? Well, it's underneath x. x is our horizontal variable. So um, take the square root of 16, okay? So the square root of 16 is 4, which means I'm going to go 4 units in the horizontal direction. So I will go 1, 2, 3, 4 units right, 4 units left. And we'll talk about this in a minute or two, but those are going to represent either my vertices or my co-vertices. Okay, so y is going to represent vertical, because uh, that's my vertical that moves up and down. Um, this 4 value, let's take the square root of it, which is 2, and we're going to move 2 units up and down. Now, once you've gotten that far, that gives you your guidelines, your guide points to sketch your ellipse. Okay, again, it's basically an oval. All right. Um, now, you notice I have... Instead of calling these diameters, like we were with the circle, not a diameter because they're different lengths, but uh, let's call these axes. So I have this horizontal axis and this vertical axis. The longer one is called my major axis. So this one here, in this example, it's horizontal. My major, major means like bigger, right? So that's my major axis. Okay. Um, this here is going to be my minor axis. So that's something we need to find. That's one of our like key features. Okay, so these are features down here. Key information. So our major axis, we want the length of it. So my major axis, let's see, I went four in each direction, so that's going to be eight units. Minor axis, I went two up, two down, so that's four units. Okay. Um, my vertices are always on the major axis with ellipses. Co-vertices will be on the minor axis. So um, these two points here are my vertices. And you can do this two ways. You can plot the points and then figure out the coordinates, which this is pretty easy because I moved an integer value of 4 to the right and to the left. Well, that's easy to identify. It's just 4, 4, right? So 4, 4, and negative 4, 4. Now, if I, if I move like 3 point something instead of 4, it becomes a little trickier. So another way you can write this is, okay, let's write my center, which was what? 0, 4. And then I moved left and right, which affects the y value, the same distance, right? I moved right and left a distance of 4, comma, 4. So 0 plus 4 gets me 4, 4. 0 minus 4 gets me negative 4, 4. Now, with this example, you would probably just go right into here. But you can see if it was like the square root of 13 or something, you would do... Um, 0 plus or minus square root of 13 comma 4. I'm not sure that's going to apply on these notes, but hopefully you get the point there. Um, all right, our minor axis contains our co-vertices. So these two top and bottom are my co-vertices. So that's going to be um, 0, 2, and 0, 6. Again, we can take our center of 0, 4, and I'm going to add and subtract that value of 2 from the y value because that was going up and down. So that's another way you can write it. Okay, hardest part um, the foci. Okay, the foci will always be contained inside of your ellipse. So inside of your ellipse. Also, always along the major axis.
Okay. So for the foci, we're going to set up this equation. Um, C squared equals um, my big denominator minus my littler denominator. Sometimes you'll see these referred to as like A squared and B squared. Um, I like to just think big minus little. It's always going to be a positive number here. So C squared is going to be your big denominator minus your little, which of course that gives me 12. Okay, so C squared equals 12. Take the square root of both sides. I get C is equal to the square root of 12. Okay, now what's the significance of this? Well, C, um, I want to move a distance of C from my center. along my major axis. That's a fancy way on this example of saying left and right um, to find my foci. Okay, so what I want to do is from my center, I want to move to the left square root of 12 and to the right square root of 12. Well, let's think about that. That's going to be I don't know, roughly three and a half, right? In between three and four. So I'll go one, two, three, and a little bit more. Uh, back to the center, then I'll go one, two, three, a little bit more. There are my foci. And I want to come up with the exact coordinates of that. So um, let's think, always go from the center. So my center was zero, four, um, zero, four, and then I added and subtracted from my x value, right? Because I moved left and right. So 0 plus or minus that distance of c, which was root 12. And I didn't move up and down at all. So 0 plus or minus root 12 comma 4. Well, that really gives me um, root 12 comma 4 and negative root 12 comma 4. I would probably leave it like this. You don't have to write 0 plus or minus. You could just write plus or minus. But this other one works as well. Okay. Um, all right. So that's how you find all your key information. I'm going to go through one more example. So for number 2 here, my center is going to be 2, negative 1. Square root of 25 gives me 5. That's underneath the y, so I'm going to move up and down 5. Just give me like my guide points, right? Um, square root of 1 is 1. I'm going to move left and right 1 unit. So I'm going to have a tall, skinny ellipse. So again, my major axis is the longer one. That's going to contain the vertices. So uh, 2, negative 1, it's really 2, comma, negative 1, plus or minus 5, right? Because that was the distance. So that's what? 2, 4, and 2, negative 6. You can look at the picture as well. Covertices, I move left and right. So that affects from my center. Um, I was adding and subtracting 1, right? So that really gives me 3, negative 1, and 1, negative 1. Um, major axis, what was the length? 1 moved 5 up and 5 down, so that was 10 units. Minor axis was one left, one right, so that's two units. Next, let's find our C value so I can figure out how far this time it'll be up and down along the major.